Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I am very excited to share a game with you where I played against Dragon Chess, this game I am going to showcase is from the recent chess tournament in the Bullet Chess Championship, where we had 6 participants, and Dragon Chess was one of them, I will show you the chess strategies and tactics played in this game, additionally, I sacrificed my bishop on the f7 square to open up the king's position, so let's get started without wasting any time. I started the game with e4, and we saw the g6 modern defense from black, to be honest, black could have played pawn to e5 or opted for pawn to c5, which is also viable, employing the Sicilian defense against me where we could play the three knights variation of the Sicilian, the game could have continued like this, but in our actual game, after e4 and g6, it became evident that he might be tempted to play pawn to g6 or b6 followed by a6 or b5, which is an exciting variation in the modern defense, so. After d4 and bishop to g7, we have knight to c3. Here, black had many good options like considering pawn to c5 or the moves pawn to d6 or d5, these moves are viable, and dragon chess could have employed them in the game, some of you might be thinking, how can pawn to d5 be a good move? Because I can easily capture it with support from my knight, but black can initiate a heavy counterplay by playing knight to d7, followed by knight to b6 and knight to f6, counterattacking the pawn on d5 with three pieces, which is a major plan in black's position, but dragon chess, as the number three chess engine in the world, chose a different approach, he decided to play pawn to c6, preparing for the d5 move, by playing c6, he gave me the opportunity to play bishop to f4, getting access to this diagonal. Simultaneously, I can also develop my light square bishop to c4 to free this diagonal, however, his pawn structure might block my bishops, he can create a center barrier with his pawn structure, which is why I first developed my knight and threatened to play bishop to c4 to gain access to this file, so, after pawn to d6 was played in the game, it became clear that he wanted to play knight to d7, forming the stage where he could push the pawn to e5 with the support of the knight, or play c5 if necessary. And also provide an open diagonal for the light square bishop, at this juncture, I had the chance to play bishop to c4, but I decided to go with bishop to e2 because the knight could potentially come to g5 to create some pressure, I chose to play passively in the game because he is the number 3 chess engine in the world. I did not want to make any sacrifices in the opening or play any overly strategic moves because his modern defense is very strong and promises good defenses. That is why I played pawn to h3. To prevent any sort of attack on the g4 square by the knight to the bishop on e3. So, after some queen moves and the bishop moves to the a4 square, it became evident that I wanted to push my pawn to e5, supported by three pieces, which might open up the diagonal for the bishop, that is why he decided to move his knight back to the d7 square, overpowering the e5 square with three pieces and also preparing for his own e5 move, after a4 e5 and the bishop moves back, some of you might be confused about what black should play in this position, you can see that in this king's indian setup. Black has formed a pawn structure in the center, and his pawns are very passive on the queen's side, as a result, his pieces are stuck behind the structure and can't move freely, some of you might argue that playing rook to e8 might be a good move to open up the file, but here I can play the cunning move pawn to d5, dominating the center with my knight and pawn, you can see that black cannot even push the pawn to c5 because the b5 pawn might become an overpowered outpost for my knight. And your queen will be vulnerable, so, after knight to a6, bishop comes out, and knight goes to b4, my knight will reach the g5 square, at this juncture, some of you might be tempted to play pawn to h6 in order to force my knight back, but here I can play a stunning move that would even surprise Magnus Carlsen, knight takes f7, sacrificing the knight right away, after you capture, the bishop can x-ray the king because he is the doctor in x-raying research, so, after pawn takes c6, it holds a discovered check. The king moves back, and I grab the knight back, here comes the queen to f3, checking the king, and you can observe that the black king is completely vulnerable and his position is burdened, even queen f7 is coming to pick up the bishop, and this position is just game over for black, so, going back to the position, 
we see that rook to e8 or any normal move will result in brutal consequences, that's why black decided to capture on d4, and after my recapture, the d6 pawn becomes a backward pawn for black. Which can easily be targeted by my queen. At first glance, my bishop is attacking the g7 bishop on black's kingside to reduce some defensive pieces, that's why black decided to go with knight f6, directly attacking the e4 pawn and simultaneously opening up the bishop's diagonal, after bishop c4, as I mentioned in the opening, my bishop can come to c4 or a4 to dominate this diagonal. So let me tell you a divine quote. Those who are motivated only by desire for the fruits of action are miserable, for they are constantly anxious about the results of what they do. At this juncture, we have knight d7 followed by a5, blocking the knight from coming to these squares, you can't push your b6 pawn right away because the a file will be open for my rook, with this pawn structure and the kingside pawn structure, black's pieces are stuck and demobilized. Some might be tempted to play bishop takes h6 to give the bishop an open diagonal and space, but I can counter by maneuvering my knight with knight h2, after the rook moves the queen will come to the f3 square to pressure the knight on f6, this creates a very bad situation for black because knight g4 can create weaknesses on the king side, and the f7 pawn might become a target for a heavy attack by the queen and the bishop. At this juncture, bishop h6 is a very risky and bad move, some might be tempted to play rook e8, which seems logical and authentic for some 2000 rated players, but you know what even 2000 rated players are like dust on my shoes, it does attack the pawn on e4, but I can initiate a heavy attack by playing knight to g5, directly attacking the pawn on f7, playing rook to f8 might render the rook passive, which is why after you play rook to e7, I can push my pawn to f4. Dominating the center and preparing for a push to e5, at this juncture, you can see that I am focusing on opening up the file for the rook, and the pawn is under attack. Some of you might be tempted to play rook to b8 because the universe and human mistakes are infinite, many people consider playing pawn to b6 to free up the pieces, but here I can play the superb move bishop takes f7, sacrificing the bishop for the pawn, you might say that it is just an exchange of pieces, the rook for two pieces. But my knight can come to e6, dominating the center of the board, and your queen will have no escape squares, trapping her on the queen side. Returning to the position, we saw that rook to e8 is a very risky and bad move, even if you dare to play a normal move in this position, I can initiate a heavy strategy and attack, this is why Dragon Chess, the number 3 chess engine in the world, decided to play rook to d8, also, he is my subscriber, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then what are you waiting for? Like and subscribe to my channel. Now, with rook to d8, can you imagine what white should play in this position? I played a very authentic move, not knight to g5 to attack the pawn, but a move that even Magnus Carlsen would need 69 minutes to think about, bishop takes f7, sacrificing the bishop right away, some of you might be tempted to think it's a trap if I capture the bishop, so you might consider moving the king instead of capturing the bishop, but knight to g5 will follow, the bishop will retreat, and the knight can jump to f7, creating vulnerabilities, that's why you have to accept my sacrifice. When Stockfish gives you something, you have no choice but to take it, because I am the king of chess, after knight to g5 check, you cannot move your king back because then I can play knight to e6, attacking the queen and trapping her on the board, so, at this juncture, we have king to e7. I am aiming to push my pawn to e5 by playing f4 and opening up the files for my two pieces, that is why I sacrificed my bishop on the f7 square, I employed the strategy of pushing my pawn to f4, preparing for e5, here, black tried to defend his position by playing pawn to h6, but I immediately struck in the center by pushing my pawn to e5, attacking both the knight and the pawn simultaneously. At this juncture, some of you might be tempted to play h takes g5, but that is a very poor move because I can easily recapture with my knight, after that, Queen e2 check will force the king to move, and then f takes g5 will pin the bishop, making it vulnerable and easily taken, your position will be completely lost. Returning to the position, some players might be tempted to capture the pawn on e5, 
but this is also a weak move because I can move my queen to d3, attacking the pawn on g6, after captures and recaptures, queen takes bishop is coming, and additionally, I can play queen to f7 check, the knight is a very well researched piece, like Nikola Tesla, who solved many problems, after captures and recaptures, the king moves up, knight to e4 check, capturing and recapturing on d4, forcing the king to move. After queen takes e4, your king is completely vulnerable, the rook on d1 check is coming, and the king cannot move because the rook from f1 can harass the king by capturing the pawn, I will get three connected past pawns on the king side, which is a completely favorable position for me. Returning to the position, we saw that both pawn takes pawn and pawn takes knight are very poor moves, that is why black decided to play knight to h5, trying to secure his position, after I captured the pawn and the queen recaptured, rook to e1 check forced the king to move, the king cannot go to f7 due to the knight's protection, and it cannot move back to f8 because I can capture the bishop on g7, forcing the king to move, and then I will win your queen on d6. This is the reasoning behind rook to e1 check, which is why black decided to block the check with his knight on e5, despite it being attacked by two pieces, the knight is also under attack by the rook, but interestingly, you cannot capture the knight on e5 because then I can capture your bishop on d4, checking the king and simultaneously attacking the queen on d1, the f-pawn was pushed forward a long time ago and can't block the check anymore. Going back to the position, there is a potential chance of exchanging queens, which is why I decided to move my knight back to f3, protecting the d4 square and attacking the knight on e5 simultaneously, black decided to capture the pawn on f4, directly attacking the bishop. However, you cannot capture the knight right away because it will lead to queen takes queen on the board, that is why I played queen c1, putting pressure on the knight on f4 and also safeguarding myself from the queen's attack on the d-file, some of you, cockroach rated brain, might be tempted to play pawn to g5 to protect the knight, but after I capture and recapture, rook takes e5 will come, the king moves back, and queen e3 follows, forming a queen rook battery, after a move like bishop d7. I can move my knight to e4, attacking your queen, as the queen moves to any natural looking square, I can easily capture the pawn on g5. This cunning move exposes the king by attacking your structure, after rook takes g5 happens on the board, the queen has to move back, and then rf1 comes, attacking the knight and putting pressure on the queen and king simultaneously. The position is just completely lost for you, additionally, I have two connected past pawns, which is very favorable for me. But don't worry, let me inspire you by sharing a divine quote. You came here empty-handed and so will you leave, what is yours today belonged to someone else yesterday, and tomorrow someone else will call it his. Returning to the position, we saw that even pawn to g5 is not possible to protect the knight, which is why dragon moved his king back to f8, prioritizing his king's safety, as soon as your king is safe, all your pieces can make effective and efficient positional advantages, at this juncture, we have bishop takes e5 queen c5 check, and as the king moves, we have knight h5, trying to protect his bishop on g7 from being captured, the bishop is essential for defense and the king needs defensive pieces to safeguard its position. We have knight e4, trying to disrupt his position by controlling the center squares, and as the queen moves back, we have knight g3, attacking the knight and the bishop simultaneously, this position is very challenging for black. So, dragon chess played very authentically and reasonably captured the piece on the g3 square, as I recaptured, he immediately played queen to b4, but it was a poor move because I could play pawn to c3, forcing the queen to retreat to the c5 square, with the queen on c5, I played bishop to c7, attacking the rook, the square is well protected by the rook, so where should the rook move? The rook shouldn't move to the e8 square because I can move my queen to the f4 square, checking the queen on the board, your king cannot go to the g8 square because rook takes e8 will come, so after queen goes to the f5 square to block the check and simultaneously offer an exchange, I can respond by playing queen to d6 check, forcing the king to move, after the capture and the king captures the rook, rook to e1 check will come, it's like when 1000 satans die, Lucifer is born. 
After the check and the king moves up, rook to e7 check will come, forcing the king to move again, then, a game changing move, queen to d8 check, forces you to block with the bishop, here, bishop to e5 follows, putting you in a completely lost position, the king is just covered by a deadly fog, rook to g7 check is coming with the support from the bishop, forcing the king to move to h8, then rook to f7 will attack both the queen and the king simultaneously, your bishop is pinned on the f8 square by the queen. And your light square bishop is also pinned due to the rook on the a8 square, this position is completely winning for me, black can't even win a single pawn. Returning to the position, we saw that rook to e8 is not viable, which is why dragon chess played rook to d5, trying to protect the f-file by playing rook to f5 against queen to f4 check, I attacked and kicked away the rook with c4, but the rook stayed on the f-file diagonal, queen to d2 came into play to deliver queen to d8 check, the rook, along with the queen, created a very destructive situation for black, after black's king moved, bishop to b6 followed, rook to e8, king moved up, and bishop to e5 came. Attacking the bishop, your bishop couldn't capture my bishop, because I could recapture with my knight on the e5 square, then, rook to e7 check would come, forcing your king to move, and I could pick up the pawn on g6, creating a very vulnerable situation for you, that is why dragon chess necessarily played queen to d5, attacking the queen and voluntarily attacking the e5 bishop with three pieces, I had no other choice but to exchange queens, after the queen exchange. Rook to c1 came to attack the bishop on the c8 square, making your bishop very vulnerable, at this juncture, some of you might be tempted to capture the bishop on the e5 square, but it is a very ineffective move because I can recapture it with my knight, after king g7, I can play pawn to g4, forcing the rook to move, some of you might be tempted to play rook f8 to protect the bishop on the c8 square, but don't worry, here comes rook c7 check, forcing the king to move. As the king moves back to the g8 square to protect the rook, it will create immense pressure on your pieces, I can play rook from e7 to g7, threatening to check with the knight on g6, leading to a potential checkmate, so, after rook f6, rook g7 will come, forcing the king to move again, as the king moves to the f8 square, I can easily capture the pawn on g6, forcing the king to move once more, king to e8 is not possible, and you would have to sacrifice your rook, otherwise, there is no way to save the game. Rook to g8 followed by rook takes f8 will lead to a checkmating position for you. Going back to the position, we see that capturing the bishop on e5 is not viable, which is why dragon chess decided to move his rook back to f7, after bishop captures, I easily capture the bishop on c8, after the exchange, you can see that I have an extra knight, putting me in a winning position, as the game progresses, my king moves to the g3 square, and the knight and rook try to fight valiantly, my king advances, and I have many pawns on the g and h files, I promote to a new queen, slowly, this leads to a checkmate with the queen on a3, this was a very dynamic and nasty game between me and dragon chess, this game was played in the bullet chess tournament, I hope you enjoyed it very much, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye, see you later.